gents, uh, it's best to say I'm a happy camper now because I've got a broom in my hand, courtesy <laughs> of uh, McCormick. And well, on the McCormick stand, we've uh, we've come across uh, Luke Barnard, who's going to tell us basically what you're showing off today, Luke. Well, we've got two tractors on the stand. We've got the one just behind us here, the X7624, which is our latest Stage 5 uh, X7 offering with the CVT transmission. Uh, and then opposite us over there, we've got the X8, which is our largest tractor. We do at 310 horsepower, uh, and it's in both tractors in the red power livery. I was going to say, they're looking a bit, uh, looking a bit eye catchy, you know? Yeah, they? yeah. So we've got the metallic red paint. We've got the uh, matte black rims, which is uh, not limited edition. It's just uh, an option throughout, but you can still have, obviously, standard red and silver rims and a mix and match between. So. Right, so which one's really the standard colour now? Is it the, the old red or this red? Uh, or so the old red is still the standard, but we're yeah. finding more and more now through the UK, a lot of dealers are just going everything in this red. Yeah. Uh, so more the stock spec tractors, we still see a lot in the standard red, but pretty much everything X7 Plus, you know, probably 90% are in the metallic yeah. red now. That's it, once you spend mm. it a bit more. Let's go yeah, a bit further, I mean, let's tick that even, box as we've well. We've even got some that have had them all stripped and painted black as well out really? of their own monies. Yeah, right. so, yeah, there's a bit of a keenness for the brand finally, which is good. That's good. Yeah. So, let's. Let, I mean, we'll, we'll go into a bit more detail on these two models. So, obviously, you've got the X8.680 over there. So, yep. that's, that's the flagship one, that one. That's the flagship, yeah. So, that's still a Tier 4 final model that we've got there. It's our national demonstrator. Uh, so, the numbers on the bonnet are still a bit... Iffy, should we say, there's no representation of the tractor, but going to stage five, uh, that'll change to what we would call an X8.631, right. which will then equate to the 310 horsepower. Ah, so, so. The, that, that 3.1 yep. is the 310 yep. horsepower. Yeah, right. so the X8 range, the dot six is the six cylinder, yep. and then the three one would be the 310 horsepower. Right. So with that logic, this is the one that's kind of kicked it off, really. Kicked it off, yeah. X7.624, 240 horse. 240 horse, power, yeah. 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 Hey. <laughs> we'll sign you up, do job. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, let's talk about the X7 range, because obviously, I mean, what's it been around now? Since 2012, something like 12, that? 12, 13, yeah. So yeah. it started off when uh, Tier 4 Interim came in with the Ad Blue, uh, sort of an evolution from the X70. Uh, we then went into sort of the tier four final range where we made some slight changes in the transmission, going from a 24 by 24 power shift to a 30 by 15, uh, and then obviously the CVT option as well. And then we've arrived here with the latest aggressive styling, ready yeah. to ready to take some people That's on. That's it, because you've kind of moved away from that sort of rounded sort yep. of face to, yep. to the what arrived with the X8. Yep. Yeah, yeah, a bit more aggressive styling, a bit more modern styling, more sort of appealing to the younger generation, should we say? And yeah, we're starting to see the benefits of that as well. That's it. And then, obviously, th this new style, and it's going to be on some of your new models that's coming out as well. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. you've got some so, quite exciting news on the way. It's quite exciting news, very exciting news, yeah. So the, what we see here with the general styling uh, is very much mimicked right the way through the family range. So if you buy a sort of 70 horsepower tractor to a 300 horsepower tractor, you get that same McCormick family feel. Yeah. So obviously you've got... Uh, you know, new short wheelbase, new look, X7 yep. as well, yep. that's that's coming. Yeah, so we've got the short wheelbase range, which is, again, it's still an X7, uh, but we then have a four-cylinder and a six-cylinder, uh, two models in each, where you've got a, a 155 boost to 165, and then a 166 boost to 175. So you've got what we call the X7 417 and 418, and then the X7 617 and 618. Uh, and then obviously the, the 180, 175 horsepower version is available in CVT or PowerShift. Right, ideal. And then, yeah, yeah moving down the family, new X6. This is, yeah, this is probably the big announcement. This is the big This is the yeah. big, big one. Uh, this is the uh, the real, real game changer for us. So we've, we've been running a lot of uh, hashtag game changer when this first came out. Uh, but the X6, new X6 is very much the big one for us. Yeah. Uh, so we've gone to our very own Argo six-speed PowerShift. Uh, we've got a Category 3 back end going from Cat 2 on the previous X64 models. Uh, brand new cab with some nice panoramic load of viewing glass, two-piece glass in the roof. Uh, LED lighting options, brand new cab interior. Pretty much everything from the ground up is brand new. Uh, and yeah, very, very exciting. Yeah. And the new styling new as well, styling just to, to go well. with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So? Yeah, available also with the red power. Yeah. It does, it looks a stunning <laughs> tractor, we can't wait to show yeah. you. <laughs> well, I'm going to say I can't wait straight out, to be honest. Yeah, it does. I've seen the pictures and it does look it does. really smart. Ideal, well, yeah, look forward to trying out a few of these new models, particularly that X6. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, thank you very much for your no, time. Thank you very much for your time. Spot on, <laughs> I've got to finish my break.
Right, ladies and gents, now time for some telehandler action. And, well, they've been famous for a long time with your pivot steers, yep. and they've done smaller rigid telehandlers before, but now they're having to go at the big boys now, aren't you? <laughs> So yeah, we're on the Cars Billington stand and I'm with Mr. Adam Graham from Vardaman who's going to tell us all about this new beauty because it seems to be getting a hell of an amount of interest because it's, well we found it hard to set up a camera for a start off <laughs> just to try and get a quiet spot so yeah so Adam sorry carry yeah. on hit me oh, with it. Thank you very much James. Yeah so we've got a brand new Vardaman 7042 machine now 4.2 tonne to 7 metre we're launching this machine this year. We've um, been designing it for four years. We've got a team of design engineers in Leicester who've designed it. And it's from built Leicester? From Leicester, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, so uh, British designed, built in Germany. Right, so best of both worlds, really. Be best of both worlds, yeah. Best, <laughs> Thinks best it's a Rolls Royce. <laughs> exactly, yeah, so exactly. So it's got a Perkins 136 horsepower engine. Right. It's a 904J engine, it's built from the ground up for stage five, so it's got ab blue, yeah. DPF. It's all cost coupled to the engine, so it's been designed purely for stage five. Right. So, so what, what size is that engine in this? That's a 3.6 litre. Right, and yeah. how many horses is this one, sorry? Uh, 136, it starts at 122, Right. but it's uh, under, this machine is 136 horsepower. Right, got you. And then, yeah, swinging off the back of that, transmission-wise, what's this? It's, it's a power drive 255, it's a two-speed hydrostatic transmission change on the move so it's um, yeah so it's great transmission yeah so that that hydrostatic in this then will that be a mechanical range change when you change or is that just simply a case of when you hit the high range it's it alters yeah, squash it, plate yeah when you hit the high range it alters it just your squash plate so you've got that full drive yeah and this is a not to 40 k right yeah yeah so it's a, it's got a hitch on it as well you can talk to 16 ton with it 16 ton yeah right. 16 ton yeah, yeah option of air brakes or hydraulic um, trailer brakes right and you've got a single acting um, spool and a double acting spool at the back so if you've got a grain trailer you can open the back door and yeah. tip the machine without having to swap any pipes right so you've been so, fairly generous yeah we're trying to so to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have indeed it's it's a premium product it's a, it's a good spec machine for the yeah. UK market that's it you're going for it really we're going for it yeah really. yeah you're not just messing about are you yeah but no we're not <laughs> No, we're in it for you know for long term, and there's a, there's a lot of dealers very excited about getting this machine. We've been waiting a long time, so now it's here. Yeah, you can see from the car stand today, we've been um, uninundated with customers. Well, that's it. It's just with the crowds around it, it's just yeah. unreal, really. Yeah, yeah. So no, yeah, especially for a brand new product as yeah, well. That's it, James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, I mean, talk us through the cab, really. Just some of the you know some of the features on the cab. Well, well the cab. It's a brand new design cab. It's it's unique. It's got a patent. It's for four post design and as you can see from the the roof it's a one piece glass windscreen all the way to the top so when you're loading up to seven meters you've got a, a clear a clear view of your uh, of your bucket yeah the joystick it's all suspended by with the seat so when your seat goes up and down your joystick right so that's all connected to the seat and yeah moves that, with the that's, seat. that's all connected to, to the seat yeah and fully adjustable um, steering column we've gone for the one piece door which well, you've got Everything's got aircon nowadays, yeah. so your, um, your your top door glass slides all the way back. Yeah. So you can um, you know get a bit of air if, if needs be. You know. That's but, it. But everything's you know, aircon, um, air seat, boom suspension. So it's uh, yeah. Nice, got all, nice, got nice all the creature comforts. All the creature comforts. Right. Yeah. And then right, so moving forward onto yep. headstock, what sort of headstock options are you for offering? The, for the UK, we're on pin and call, Matt Bro pin and call, which right. is a great headstock. There's a lot of people there with yeah. uh, with Matt Bro, you know, old Matt Bro. So it's a, it's a, our There's best plenty selling. of them about, isn't there? there is Those indeed, headstocks, yeah. yeah. There is indeed. Then you, you can get Vitamin, Kramer, JCB, Merlot. So um, we've not got them all, but. We've got the vast you got majority, most of them, yeah. Most you of got the key position. ones. We've got the key ones, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So. Ideal. And then, I mean, let's talk about the all important availability because that's always fun at the fun and games <laughs> at, the, at the moment. Yes, exactly. We're not too bad. It, order books filling, but for this year we do still have some built on. So if you place an order today, you'll yeah. be looking around July. Right. You, you know, but but obviously every day. Well, you know, every day it gets further, further yeah. away, you know, but for this year, we're not too bad. That's it, and yeah, and send one my way as well when you get a chance, and we'll have a badge. <laughs>
Perfect, well, Adam, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for us up. No worries. Thanks, James. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Thank you. Right, ladies and gents, I'm now joined by uh, Johnny Henderson of Henderson Agri Services, and we're going to talk about, well, rowing up tackle, you could say. So, yeah. I mean, Johnny, I mean, what have you got here? Because it's a, it's a bit different from the usual rake. Yeah, so we've uh, two front-mounted rakes uh, from Agronic in Finland. Um, the WR500 is the smaller one at the front there, it's uh, a five metre working width. And uh, the bigger one here, the WR600, a six metre working width. Um, this one can be front or rear mounted as an option, uh, and they can both be loader mounted uh, as All well. All right. Yeah. So you can actually stick it on the loader? Yeah, we get a separate bracket that would fit in here or onto the three point linkage on the small rake. Yeah. Uh, because it's hydraulic driven, there's no need for a PTO shaft. Right. So, I mean, for, for for instance, if you know if all tractors were tied up, could you stick a telehandler on yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, no problem yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah. If you got the if you got the oil flow, which most telehandlers will. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a couple of extra pipes and the adapters, whatever you're away. Yeah, no problem. Jobs are good. So you mentioned the working widths here. Uh, are they variable? Can you uh, alter you, the working You can width, vary them. Yep. Yeah, if you want to, um, as you vary the width, you vary the width of the swath. So it yeah. depends what you're looking for there. So really, it's a swath that you want to be matching up to your baler yes, or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Right. So obviously, it looks quite different to a normal rake. So just explain the sort of like, I suppose, the design behind it, the thinking behind it, really. Yeah, the thinking is is basically that uh, you can fit it on any tractor. Um, if you have a tractor that doesn't have a PTO, you don't have to buy a PTO to fit it. Um, it can be hydraulic driven, they can fit on, as you've said, telehandlers, loaders, anything you want. Um, there's safety there, there's no need for a PTO shaft that you, you can end up getting tangled up in uh, and no expensive gearboxes to go wrong. Um, you're, you've got hydraulic hoses and you've got a couple of hydraulic motors, that's yeah. your, uh, that's your, that's your big, drive line. That's your biggest expense. Um, and uh, the hydraulic motors are they're standard motors, you can get seal kits for them anywhere, that, they're replaceable seal kits as well, so yeah. um, your downtime's at a minimum, you don't have to wait for me to send you out parts, you that's can it. just go to your local hydraulic guy and get new seal kits and out and away you go again, you're having to wait days and days for, that's for, it. for parts. Well I was going to say, because obviously backup's always key with any, any well, machine, it, yeah. but like, if you can make it as flexible as possible, that's, yeah. that's all the better. So just, I mean, just explain, you know, sort of like the layout of these, I suppose the rotors you could say, because Obviously, it's quite a bit different, isn't it? Yeah, so we've got our hydraulic rotors, um, they're just a, a nylon tine on the bottom. It's hard wearing nylon, uh, so you, you don't have to replace them quite that often, but they're also flexible so they can work with the contours of the ground yeah. as well as the machine is, uh, it follows the contours of the ground that the, 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 the nylon tines can follow that as well. So you don't have to dig in and pick up stones or whatever, um, it'll just flex over the top of that as well if you come across a high bit. That's it. And is there any sort of like benefits to this kind of rake over like, you know, your traditional sort of rake? The main benefit is that these can be put on the front of it, of your machine. Right. So you can rake and bale at the same time or rake and forage if you've got a, a forage harvester that can follow behind the tractor, yeah. um, etc. Um, their, their main sort of benefit is you can, you can do away with a, a, a man and a, a tractor if right. required. Um, you don't have to, you can put it on the front of any tractor. It doesn't have to be on the front of the baler tractor, yeah. but that's the kind of main idea that they're thinking. Got you. And this one here that we stood next to, the bigger one, can this this can be rear mounted as well? Can this it? can be rear mounted as well. Yeah, there's a second bracket on the front there, um, which is an option uh, that you can have it rear mounted as well if you want. So if you've got a smaller tractor, maybe not needing this hanging on the front of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 there. That's it. And uh, obviously, because they're, they're front mounted, it adds a little bit of length to your machine. Obviously, especially when you got the baler behind yeah. as well. Um, how are people sort of getting on with you? They're getting on fine. I mean, yeah. The, the smaller one certainly is. This is the first one we've got in the country of the bigger rake. Yeah. Um, so we're looking forward to doing demos of that. We've done loads of demos with the smaller one, loads of sales as well. Um, it's not any worse than a front-mounted mower or a front tank on a sprayer. Yeah. Uh, you've just got to be a bit more careful. You know? Yeah. And is there a certain sort of knack to it in field, getting around corners and things like that? Corners, or? corners can be a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just a case of uh, getting your head screwed on and, and thinking about how you're going to do it. Um, most of my customers, they they, they they don't have a problem with it. They, yeah. There's they do have to do things differently than they have done before, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we can. There's ways round about it, so it. round about corners. That's it. Well, it's like anything. You just got to work out. You know, yeah, how you, yeah. How you get the most out of the machine. Isn't they it? wouldn't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't not have their machine just because of they've got to do corners. Yeah, you know. it's not a mega optical yeah, yeah. at all. No. Perfect. Well, Johnny, again, thank you very much for your time. Thank it's been you. Spot on that.
Right, boys and girls, now on to the Russell stand, which, as you can imagine, has a mega lineup of machinery, not least this uh, monster new forage wagon from uh, Pottinger. And to tell us all about it, I've got Mr. Steve Passam from Pottinger UK. So this is a game changer. Uh, it's a game changer. Look at yeah. hell. <laughs> Straight in with big guns. Well, we've got to try, haven't we? <laughs> it is. It's the new concept, to be honest. It's been designed uh, from the ground up. Uh, using the knowledge that we've got yeah. on the wagons all the way through. This isn't a facelifted wagon of, that you've already had? or uh, No, it's the Jumbo uh, range has been, uh, you could call it a facelift, but to be honest it's redesigned because it's got the new power drive, it's got the new knife bank, it's got a new rotor, it's got the new front board, so it's basically been redesigned. Yeah, yeah, particularly um, all this front end, yeah. brand new. But, um, Biggest one of the biggest points is the power drive system that we've got. It's now a belt drive system that gives us from 200 to 500 horsepower. So the 500 horsepower is probably the one of the largest horsepower going through a wagon. Yeah. Um, going through into the 48 knife chopping system, still giving us the optimum 34 mil chop, and with a large um, hardened faced rotor, right. which is in it, which helps us push the grass right up in front uh, of where we need it. And then with the intelligent loading headboard that we've got. It makes it uh, easy loading. To yeah. Be honest. So you can stick a big donkey on this. Yeah. You yeah. want some horses on the front yeah. of it to get the optimum. To get out the most out of it. Yeah. Right, got you. So I mean, let's just go back to this uh, this new belt drive. So you've obviously got belt drive that way running from the main PTO shaft, yep. and then it's what into this big so, gearbox. Here. So it's going into the single gearbox, which is driving the rotor. So we're not going through multiple gearboxes. It's keeping the line simple. Right. So it's not like a right hand there, a right no. hand here, then another right hand there. It's just. Yep. Straight in. So the, the power band has been proved on uh, foragers, you know, you self propel foragers all the yep. way through. So we've just implemented that onto the wagon. Right. It's where, you, you know, they've delivered a thousand horsepower through the foragers uh, quite consistently for many years. Yeah. So that's where we've gone through with this. So you know, you know it works. It's, it's yeah, it's not reinventing the wheel. We're just trying to use technology onto the wagons and just give it a bit more modern that's feel. it right well that's drive line let's work our way down so pickup have you done much to that at all or it's to still the um just shy of three meter pickup with the swiveling pickup wheels that bring it down to the road transport 2.55 then they will automatically fold out for road transport and uh, so you've got that narrow bit for you going down the country lanes right so, so keeping can, the machine within yeah, that three so you meters. can select sort of like field and road modes yes, and it just sorts it. itself out yeah right Perfect. Right, let's get up into the into the guts of the machine. So you, you mentioned the rotor. That's yep. what is that? Thirty-four mil. Yeah, thirty-four mil chop length all the way through, um, and then it's got the hardened faced, the new design rotor. So this is a new rotor into this machine. Right. So what's specifically new on this rotor then? What's what's kind of <laughs> what looks different if you were looking at it? <laughs> um, looking at it visually, um, not a great deal. It's just what we've done internally. So now all the spaces have got a hard tungsten face on it. Yeah. So it's just a, a stronger rotor going through to cope with what you're going to put at it, basically. Right. That's it. A lot. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Right, so moving up, obviously, a big rotor, yep. shoving the grass upwards. Yep, straight into the now the intelligent load distance. Well, this is brand new for you, isn't it? Yes. This is something that you guys have never done before. Yep. So it's going to move into the two stage in loading, so it'll load up, then it'll move into a position which will allow you to get that little extra room and then it'll move over to the headboard. Right. So uh, it gives you the weight coming forward a little bit onto your tractor weight as well, so it's evening the distribution through uh, right. the loading of the wagon. So when you're filling then, it's kind of like upright, is it? Yes. And then it's just filling as normal, like yep. a, a straight headboard, and then once pretty much the back's full, then it starts coming forward. That's it. it. That, yeah, right. that's it. Uh, there's a few options you can have at it with. You could have it fixed so you can move it manually, or you can have it as an intelligent one where it would load itself basically. Yeah, ideal. And then, yeah, let's get to the box. The big box. I mean, what sort of sizes are you doing with the jumbo? For the range, we're going from uh, 30 up to 50 cube. Uh, 55 cube this wagon. Right, is uh, that a compressed figure or an actual figure or what figure? What figure is that one? That's a compressed figure. That's a compressed figure. Yeah. Right. Um, of course, your dry matter and um, your, you know, how wet it is and things like that. It's always variable a little bit. Yeah. But as you can see by the physical size of it, it's uh, it's a monster lot, uh, wagon. Yeah, it's a big box. Isn't yeah. It? That's it. Right. So that that's the size. Uh, and then yeah, underneath sort of uh, so running gear. Underneath you've got the adjustatic suspension, 
which is an option, so you can adjust that. And they also essentially adjust when you're going down the road and it senses itself uh, for keeping it level through the fields. Right. Um, also, there's an option of way cells you can have on. Options also for underneath the auto cut, the true onboard auto sharpen. Yeah. Uh, which is still going through the whole range of Pottinger wagons. Perfect. Well, Steve, thank you very much for your time. It's been spot on, is that? No Love it. So, yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on it. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I'm we'll going to find a big donkey and we'll sort it out. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it up to you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Right, ladies and gents, I'm now joined by uh, Alan Whitlow from Fent UK and we're on the Peacock and Binnington stand and we're going to have a quick look at the new Fent 200 series, so the little baby Fent. So obviously, I mean, you guys, you're famous, you're very well known for, you know, you like your 700 series and above, but obviously you do smaller tractors as well, unbeknown to quite a few people and I, I would imagine it's something you'd quite like to push as well. Yes, Richard, yeah, that's correct. We do do smaller ones, we're predominantly known for the larger horsepower and this is our 200 series, and this is in the, the S series, the, the agricultural version. We do do this in a vineyard in a smaller application, which the basic tractor is the same, just slightly narrower axles and a slightly smaller cab. Right. But this is a, a very um, well-suited loader tractor, and a lot of the dealers are finding this is an avenue that they can sell into now with this yeah. little smaller tractor. That's it, and with the loader on and the Vario transmission, It'll be just like driving a hydro sort of telehandler, really. <laughs> it, it is, and you can drive it on the, the joystick or on the pedal mode in um, either application for the loader. Right. So how many models are in the 200 series these days? Uh, there's four models in the 200 series. Right, and uh, yeah. what sort of horsepower levels are we talking? They, they go from 60 horsepower up to this one, which is 110 horsepower. Right, so this, this is the flagship 200, this one? It is, yes. It's, it's the largest one in the 200 right. series. So it'll be a bit of a pocket rocket then, really? Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. Ideal. And then obviously this is the latest generation 200 with the new sort of family styling. So uh, apart from the looks, what else is kind of, what else is new on the Well, the looks are slightly different. The nose, front end, uh, bonnet is slightly different. We moved the fuel tank from the front and it's now positioned down here so it's easier access. And that'll help to accommodate the internal components like the um, air filtration, whatever the engineers needed to fit into there. So that's basically what you can see on the exterior. And the basic uh, newness is the cab interior. It's got the Fent 1 developed cab in there. So we've got the new Fent 1 armrest yeah. and the new screen inside the cab. So all the changes are predominantly inside the cab right. for us, yes. Got you. So that new, the new Fent 1 development, which we've, which we've seen obviously on the bigger tractors, on the 500, 700s mm -hmm. and so on, does it kind of look similar to that or have you sort of had to scale it down a little we bit? scaled it down. It's not, not the same look, but it's a concept of there's a lot more on the armrest and the right hand side and you've got a nice new sort of iPad featured screen yeah. in the front of the, the steering wheel there. Yes. So you, you get that sort of commonality, a, a lot more commonality you might say between all the all the families of tractors. Yes, yes. Yeah. Perfect. Well, Alan, thank you uh, very much for that little flavour. Right, Richard, thanks series. very much and for then, asking. Um, yeah, hopefully, we'll, uh, like with a lot of products, we'll get rounds on it at some point. Yes, we'll, definitely. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much for that. Cheers. Right, ladies and gents, now time for a bit of, well, attachments and uh, trailer action from LWC. And I'm joined by Will, uh, also known as Franco to everybody right, else. So, well, Franco, what you got going on? What are you showing Yeah, so today? we've got um, you know, a variety of different attachments here today from LWC. Um, we're a UK manufacturer based in Leeds. Um, the company itself has been going 101 years. Right. Um, but the agricultural department's been going uh, into its uh, fifth year now. Um, so, yeah, we've got a variety of attachments, you know, for tractor loaders, skid steers and telehandlers. Yeah, well, it looks like you've got a lot going on with grabs and... Yeah, we've got a fair bit. and brushes and all we've sorts of stuff bit. going on. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, we're leaning on one of your new products and there's a couple of new ones around there. So, just tell us yeah, about... So, well, we'll start with this yeah, one. Yeah, this is we? our two-ton tipping trailer. Um, you know, we've been building these now for around, you know, a year or so. Uh, probably one of our fastest moving products at the moment and um, we've had quite a bit of interest in them so you know big sturdy trailer made out of 3D mill material yeah uh, it's got features you know such as the drop side the tailgate flaps open from both sides comes with you know underneath I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera right but towing eye and things like that yeah. so so tailboard that'll be that way yeah so it opens down well. and up yeah um, right. you can also as an extra add-on so you can remove this 
I mean, you can um, have some mesh sides, so that increases the capacity. Right. Um, you know, if you're like mucking out or whatever like yeah. that, you can. Or for chipping and things yeah, like that. Yeah, with chippings, things like that, yeah. yeah. Sound, perfect. And then your other two uh, yeah, so, new products um, you've got going on? We've got the shear grab there, so that's a new design for uh, 2022. Uh, right. So we've changed the canopy on the front, you know, to give the, uh, when the grab's coming down, gives it a better cut. Yeah. Um, got some feedback from, you know, people in the industry, and that's what they've been asking for. So right. we've gone for that, and that comes in with it. two options. So it either comes with hard ox tines, or, you know, your standard uh, KV tines. Um, range of different sizes, so we do a two ram and a three ram. So it starts at four foot three or thirteen hundred mil. Yeah, and then in increments it goes all the way up to uh, six foot ten. Ideal, and presumably you had to stick any uh, any brackets on that for yeah, any, any loader so, yeah, or whatever. Bolt the, so the brackets are bolt on. So you know what we'll do is we'll supply the grab. So you know if if dealers do want to have it in stock. They can stop them there and then we can supply the, uh, the brackets at a later date. Yeah. Or alternatively, you know, if somebody's wanting to purchase one, you know, we supply it with the brackets and then we bolt it onto, you know, whatever the width of the, the headstock is, really. That's it, ideal. And what sort of price is that? Oh, for one of those, probably looking at about, depending on the size, so if that bigger one, you're probably looking at about four and a half grand off the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ideal. Mm -hmm. And then on to auger bucket. Yeah, beet feeding bucket. So. Again, probably one of our better selling products throughout, you know, the winter months, um, you know, when your cattle or whatever and you're feeding inside, yeah. instead of doing it by hand, um, you know, it's just got a chopper in the middle, comes complete with a stone trap on the end and the shoe, um, so that's for the safety, you know, don't want stones getting in within your beat or well, anything exactly, like that, yeah. so, um, it comes in two different sizes as well, we do one width at the moment, um, which is six foot six wide, but then it either comes in a 32 cube or a 53, Right. Um, but yeah, that's about it really. Spot on, oh well. Great range of stuff you've got yeah. going on there, so yeah. So fingers crossed for a good show. Yeah, well thank you very much for no your time, Frank. Cool. Thank you very much. Nice Cheers, Paul. Right, ladies and gents, uh, like a lot of people, I do love a special edition or a limited edition, and this particular machine from Merlot on the uh, Brian Robinson stand certainly caught my eye. So to tell us all about it. <laughs> We've got Mr. Jim Chapman here from uh, Merlot UK. So, Jim, tell us about this particular model. Yeah, this is a Merlot Turbo Farmer TF. It's a 42.7, which means it's a 4.2 tonne max lift with a 7 metre reach, uh, 145 horsepower. Um, you may have noticed it's not the traditional Merlot green. No. It's in a special black, and the reason for that is because it's 10 years since Brian Robinson machinery have been um, been selling Merlots and so it's a celebratory special edition today. Right, got you. So this this black paint job, it was made for this dealer, Brian Robinson uh, yeah, machinery. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a special yeah. edition, um, you know, to make it sort of stand out from the crowd if right. you like. Cause but if you were, obviously if you were buying this from somewhere else or anybody else, could you order it with this with You this can do, job? yes, right. yep, yep. Um, we do have one or two other dealers up and down the country who've had them in black and yeah. um, always makes a splash especially when they get onto Facebook and all the social that's media it. stuff um, so yeah it, it, as I say it makes an impact that's it yeah so has there been quite a bit of an uptake for black Merlots uh, probably about half a dozen across the UK in the last uh, last couple of years right um, and as I say most of them go onto social media on Facebook yeah and Instagram <laughs> and all, all those that other stuff and uh, um, yeah and everybody goes whoa don't they look great and to be honest they do look great. Yeah. But we do like the Merlot Green. Yeah. We do it. like the Merlot Green. We know green. whose it is when it's a Merlot exactly. Green. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So let's get back to this model then. Obviously, yeah. TF42.7. Yep. Uh, in terms of this model, has this had any sort of like recent updates, refreshes, things like that? Yeah, like everybody, we've come into the tier five engine uh, regulations in the last couple of years or so. Um, so yes, there's been a few few upgrades. We've changed the, I suppose the, the big one for us has been we've changed the uh, the joystick. Um, there's also been some changes on the, on the headstock and some certain things like that. Mainly the regulations changed the engine, so yeah. the emissions coming up to the tier five regulations. Um, and you know, to be honest. It, it was a great machine before, um, yeah. you know, we haven't changed too much. The cab is still the largest cab in its class. Um, we've still got the ring of steel, which means basically puts all the weight of the machine into the middle of the machine. Yeah. Um, and therefore the, the size dimensionally, it's a smaller machine than our competitors. In this class. Even though 
we have the same capacity and the f same reach. Right. So from a manoeuvrability point of view, if you've got stanchions or you've got a limited space to operate your machine in, you need to be going for a Merlot. Right. Simple as that, is it? Simple you, you as that. It yeah, you heard it here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, let's carry on through some of the updates. So, engine-wise, that will be a Deutz in this, is it? Still a Deutz engine, yep. Um, as I say, it's now tier 5 as opposed to a tier 4. Uh, one of the changes we made, this used to be a 140 horsepower engine, the 42.7. It's now gone up to 145. So, you're giving it a few more. Yeah. Uh, and the model below this, the the, uh, the 35 7 that's actually come up from 115 horsepower to 140 horsepower. All right, that's, that's had so, a fair jump. So the model below this is, I think, is going to be one of our best sellers right. simply because we've, we've suddenly gone boom with yeah. the power. It's got some muscle. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. it. So you mentioned uh, some updates on the joystick. What, what have you yeah. done on the joystick? Uh, previously, we used to have uh, what we called a, well, some people called it a dead man switch, some people yeah. called it a live man switch. Um, yeah, <laughs> depending on which way you look at it. <laughs> terminology. Um, but yeah, you had to activate the, the switch in order to, to activate the joystick. Um, we've done away with that, and now you've got a couple of sensors on the, on the joystick, so it's an automatic, and that's been really, really well received. Yeah, that's say, it. That's so it just knows. Your yeah, it, 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 even, two, even with gloves on and things like that. Yeah, with gloves on, with with grease, with with mud. Uh, it's <laughs> Anything just in between. Two two <laughs> sensors that um, get activated, and as soon as you have activated the joystick, then you only need to keep in contact with one joystick. So it's, it's much more ergonomic than it ever was before. Right. And screen-wise, has that had a few touches? Screen-wise, yeah, we've got a screen in there, which means that if you've got a Merlot machine, a Merlot headstock and a Merlot attachment on the front end, on the screen you will get a little picture of the actual attachment which you've got on the right. end, um, which basically is, is, is the machine saying, right, okay, I know what that attachment is, so if we take it, say, to be a bucket, so we, now, we know we've got a bucket, we know what that bucket weighs, therefore we know what capacity that bucket has got and we also know what additional capacity you've got so if you say you've got a two-ton bucket you've got one ton of, of uh, material in the bucket yeah you know that you've got another ton that you can lift right so it's actually giving you lots lots more detail on that got front. yeah and that'll that'll affect all that en 15,000 regulation will it will it? do yeah yeah, yeah. So, and, you, and you'll also have the load chart on that screen yeah. as well the actual load chart for that particular bucket so you can actually see where the uh, you know where you are on that load chart and whether you're getting close to overload. All right, clever stuff. So rather than you know with some manufacturers you've got to select bucket mode, pallet mode, things like that. Yep. They still recognise the attachment and go. Actually, you're in this mode now because this Correct. is the best one for you. Correct. Right. Yeah. Perfect. And will it like say for like a, a dispenser or something like that, something that needs an oil, a constant oil flow. Will yep. it recognise things like that as well and it tell will you do, yeah. you need this one? It, it will do specifically if, it, as I say, if it's a Merlot machine, a Merlot headstock, and a Merlot attachment. It'll recognise that, so it'll actually tell the machine. So it'll, it'll basically make the machine work as efficiently as it possibly can. Yeah. Perfect. Well, there you go. Uh, and then, um, yeah, you mentioned uh, headstock updates as well. Have you done something Yeah, there? we've beefed up the headstocks. Um, we didn't have any problems with them, but we, we, we wanted to make them yeah. even future stronger. Proof. And we've changed <laughs> future-proof, if you like, yeah. Um, so there's been some, some changes on that, changes on the size of the RAM. That's increased, uh, and as I say, beefed up some of the steel work around it as well. Right, well, Jim, thank you very much for your time. So okay. spot on us up, so yeah. Brilliant. Nice one. Thank you. Ring boys and girls, let's have a bit of a big bale of chat, shall we? So I'm now joined by Mr. Craig Bryson from Crown UK. We're on the Wilfrid Scruton stand, uh, which is massive and has got lots, uh, lots on it. But we're going to focus on this beast. So I mean, Craig, I mean, for a kickoff, what model are we leaning on here, casually? You know? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's nice and comfy. So yeah, we've got the Big Pack HDP 1290 Gen 5, which is right. a new model we launched year past. Um, Yes, yeah, so a few updates from the big packs before. Right, so just, I mean, talk is like sort of front to back, just, you know, the key updates. Yeah, so on the front at the moment, it's the same camless pickup we've always had. Uh, next year, there'll be a hydraulic pickup reel option available, which lets you alter the speed depending on crops. Right. Which will be quite nice. I was going to say, it's like sort of following forager technology, isn't it? Yeah, it's moving on with that, which is nice. Um, 
These ones now have an electronic VFS trap, which you can also alter for separate crops. You can change when the packer arm puts the yeah. crop up into the baler. To, that's to get it, get that pre-chamber full before it yeah. actually does a stroke and sends it in. Yeah, yeah. so that's a, that's a nice new feature we've got, which once that ties in with a hydraulic pickup reel, there'll be no excuse for getting the perfect bale that's if it. you know how to change it. So. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> Ideal. And then, yeah, just other updates on this as well. Yeah, so um, a new um, Nauta cleaning system we've got this year for the balers called Power Clean, which before we've always had um, compressed air blowing the Nautas, mm. or there's been an HD version, which is like a big leaf blower. Um, so now the Power Clean basically seals over the top of the Nautas and creates a positive pressure. So basically, the dust and dirt and straw can't get up, it right. forces everything down. Um, which I think the test the factory have done has proven yeah. very, very good. So the good. dust has to get out of there. It's, it's got, got nowhere else to it go. It can't even get there, so right. that's been great. It runs a lot cleaner. As you can see, we've got hydraulic folding band boxes, which yeah. we had on HDP2s. They've curved a lot of bits off, so the baler naturally runs a lot cleaner than its predecessor. For so it's like less ledges and... Yeah, yeah, so you know, for your guys now with black grass having to blow off at every field they leave, it's a lot easier done now, yeah. um, which is, from an operator point of view, is great. And also the folding band boxes for health and safety point of view. No matter how short you are, you can fill it up with string, which is nice. <laughs> that's it. And well, that's it. You can get in behind them. And yeah, there's, there's loads of room. Um, yeah, for blowing off, bit of service maintenance, everything's there. Um, we've also increased the size of the string boxes as well, so you can put in the. 15 kilo bottles of string. Right. So it gives you a lot more capacity for our day's bailing, which is nice. We've still got the 610 kilo flywheel instead of the 294 one on the standard. Yeah. And you've got uh, six rams on the bale chute instead of four on the standard one. So it just right. lets you back a bit more punch when you need it. <laughs> it's fairly beefed up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just designed for yeah, output. And that's it. Weight. So this, this is a 1290 yes. uh, HDP2. HDP1. HDP1, yeah. right, got you. And do you still do like a more of a standard yeah, 1290 so, as well? Like yeah, so a the, slightly lower density or whatever you want to call it? Yeah, so you get the 1290 standard, which has replaced the high speed, although they still are high speed balers. Mm. Um, so as I say, it's got slightly smaller flywheel. Um, biggest change on them from the Gen 4 to the Gen 5 is they've all got the same length bail chamber. The high speed used to have a shorter bail chamber. Right. So you'll get a little bit more out of that than you did your Gen 4, um, but with all the same features as this, which is which is good. And then also in the Gen 5, you've got the, the 1270s had a Gen 5 facelift as well, which is also the multi bill baler as well. So yeah. yeah, a lot of nice new exciting stuff to play I'll with this lots, summer. I'm going to say, lots of stuff going on in the, yeah, in the yeah. baler world for you. Yeah, no, it's good. Ideal. And then obviously you got the new the new look, the new family styling as yeah, well. Yes, so well this new grey colour we're putting in. Um, I think it looks quite smart, it finishes it off, it's uh, gives it a new modern look and yeah it looks nice and fresh. But yeah there's a lot a lot more than new shiny panels in, which is nice. I was gonna say you pack some stuff in here. Yeah, literally. Pack literally, some stuff. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, we're all good. Ideal and what's the plan for this this year? Is it just uh, get them out there, get some demos done? Yeah, we'll get plenty of demos. Um, a good lot of my dealers up the east coast have all got their own demo units. Um, but a lot of dealers have taken on demo units this year, yeah. with it being the new model out. Got a lot to go at. Um, straw sales were good last year. There was a lot of straw to be built. So there's balers moving off the shelf, and we've got flies on that. We've got balers to sell, so yeah, um, they're in a good place, really. It's spot on. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you very much for that. I'll leave you Thank to you. your happy place and you crack up. Thank you. <laughs> nice one. Cheers. Right, ladies and gents, uh, I'm now joined by Mr. Warren Rivers Scott. Um, well, Warren, what, what's going on today? What are you showing off at the uh, at Yams? Uh, yeah, okay, so we're on a couple of stands. We're with uh, Farmstar and Paxton's. Yeah. Um, obviously, with our alliance with Case IH, it works well. Um, so we've got three machines here today, um, but two of which I really want to talk to you about. One is the seedbed preparator, uh, the Swifter, yeah. and also is the uh, the MZ6000, which is the batwing topper. Right. 
The mulcher, the backwind topper, it's really a, a fantastically well-built, strong machine. Galvanised chassis, it's got a thick chassis as well, there's plenty of steel in it. Um, we, uh, we, we've got a three rotor machine, we also start at four and a half metres, we've yeah. got the six metre machine which is here and also the seven metre machine. Right. Um, but yeah, really designed for, for get, doing uh, a, a lot of, lot of uh, uh, cover crops, um, maize stubbles, rape stubbles and that sort of thing, but also of course your you, you standard grass strip, uh, strips and so on. Yeah. Um, but overall the, the the stainless, the, the galvanised uh, chassis of the mulcher is being really well received and uh, actually it's gaining a lot of, lot of traction already. Right, so that's, that's one of your key products here today. Yep. So, I mean, we're leaning on another one. Tell us about, uh, about this one. So the Swifter uh, seabed preparator, uh, it, it's, it's quite a, an underrated machine so far in the UK. It's not been seen by that many people, but... Uh, in terms of what the factory produces by unit number, this machine, this uh, this model of machine, is the mm. biggest selling by unit number. Right. Uh, so we start at three meters. This one is a four meter folding, um, but we go right up to eighteen point four meters. You don't do things by halves, you Absolutely guys, do you? not. No. <laughs> the, the black frame we see in the middle here with these tines on, uh, they can be dropped out, and we can put a different tine carrier in. So at the moment, this is set up with a, with a, a, an aggressive uh, A share, so mm. we can go straight into stubbles with it or into lightly cultivated land, and, and with the hope of creating a seed bed afterwards, ready yeah. for drilling. Um, or we can go straight onto ploughing, uh, but with a different set of tines set in there, a gamma, a gamma tine, with mm. it, which is a passive time um, so then we're creating seabeds for maize sugar beet onions and so on so where you really want to find tilth yeah. uh, which is perfectly usable you know after one pass that's it and then you mentioned you can can you actually switch switch them out switch them between yeah you, know? but, you could buy this but main frame, you can buy, buy the whole chassis with this setup in there with these with these tines um, and just by dropping dropping the bolts out we can drop the units out when we can put a new frame in so we supply uh, as an optional extra the additional frames with the different legs in there, different tines to do the right. different job uh, and then either you got any of the other sort of options on this or Variations? Um, yeah, it, 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 there's quite a plethora of options really, depending on rollers, whether it's for stones or, or for, for, for lighter lands and so on. Um, but ultimately, the, the, the main purpose of this is, is to carry a lot of material with it, that churns through the machine yeah. and we end up with a nice nice fine tilt. Um, but yeah, we, we've got hydraulic levelling boards, we, we can put different rollers in the front or, or not, whichever, you know, it, yeah. it, it's quite, quite adaptable to what each individual farmer might want. Ideal. Uh, Warren, as ever, thank you very much for your time. Can you spot us up? Super, thank you. Sure. All the best.